It is now my pleasure to welcome to the stage, either, because I'm not sure if he made it here, Peter Kirk, Chief Executive Officer of CERMO, and Steve Aldrin. Are you Peter? Yep. Oh, good, he made it. He has a little bit of travel difficulty, so I wasn't sure. Peter and Stephen will come to the stage. Is, they, is Stephen here? I am not. I think oh, there he is. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Gail, and, and thank you, uh, Global Genes, for hosting such a wonderful summit. I'm happy to make it, as you said, straight in Lon from London last night, spent two hours in a wonderful immigration line, uh, <laughs> meant to meet my, my wife for our date night at 9.30, which became 11.30 instead of, uh, so had a little bit of takeaway sushi last night. Uh, none nonetheless, made it here this morning and look forward to partaking uh, all weekend with all of you. Um, I'm honored to be here, together with, with Steve and everyone else, to help recognize this year's Champion of Hope uh, in the category of medical care and treatment, uh, Dr. Maria uh, Escala. <laughs> now, Stephen is going to, in a minute or two, share a little bit about, about uh, Dr. Escala's uh, work. I uh, so look forward to, um, to hearing that as well. So we're going to hear a lot about this weekend, about the importance of communities standing together. Um, and number one, probably one of the biggest obstacles in rare disease is getting to the diagnosis of the right rare disease, right? As CEO of CERMO, uh, I am in awe daily of so many of you guys' work as dedicated physicians, uh, being out there battling, trying to find the truth, and improve the outcomes of patients, and you do this all the time. Uh, very proud to stand here, uh, and, and um, today knowing we have over 450,000 physicians as members of CERMO across nine countries uh, who partake in medical crowdsourcing daily. This year we will do over 6,000 medical cases. Uh, these are what we call our gray cases, where you guys come to us and to the community of CERMO, you fellow physicians, and say, look, there's something going on here. I'm not quite sure what it is. So on a daily basis, hundreds and thousands of doctors, uh, medical crowdsource together on difficult, on difficult cases. And basically what CERMO does is allow you to work in teams effortlessly and across, well, I say the globe, nine countries so far. Uh, just launched Mexico and Spain last week. So we see ourselves as a very important platform for the future of equalizing, of distributing medical knowledge and really help get, in particular in cases like rare diseases, which is essentially by, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, by definition, a great case almost always, right? There's so few of these cases for, uh, that we're hearing, hearing about uh, today and the rest of the weekend. Uh, so being able to assist with that uh, virtually and live and seeing doctors come together, often 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, even up to 200 on one case in less than 24 hours working together uh, is very awe-inspiring. Also happy to lastly announce uh, we just uh, in, in partnership, uh, which we're very proud of, uh, thank you Nicole, uh, of um, the Global Genes launched our Cermo Rare Disease Hub uh, and our Cermo Heroes program allowing a rare disease uh, specialist to use CERMO as a platform for medical crowdsourcing, allowing to connect uh, these patients uh, and the families with the wisdom of the crowds uh, through CERMO. But Stephen, I think you're going to say a few more words about Dr. Escalvar's work. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Oh, well, good afternoon or evening. Uh, my name is Steve Aldrian, and I'm joined here today uh, with my special son, Trevor. Uh, I have twin boys, and uh, I left his brother uh, at a sleepover, but this is a very special night for my son, Trevor, uh, to be here. It's our pleasure and honor uh, to have been asked to participate in this award, the 2015 Champion of Hope for Medical Care and Treatment. Uh, before I uh, begin, I'd like to also thank Nicole Boyce and Global Genes for everything that you do in the rare disease community, and to see these individuals uh, get this recognition is, is amazing. Uh, so thanks uh, for that. On June 10, 2009, 
uh, my family's world was uh, turned upside down. That was the date that at seven months of age, Trevor was diagnosed with Crab A disease. Crab A is a terminal neurodegenerative disorder that affects the white matter of the brain as well as the insulation of his nerves and it affects his peripheral control so he's unable to talk or walk, uh, move his arms or legs. At the time of his diagnosis, Trevor was crying inconsolably uh, almost every waking moment of the day and actually it had been going on for several months and he was in suffering from tremendous pain from his condition. The diagnosing neurologist had explained to us that there was no treatment available, that things were only going to get worse uh, for Trevor, and that we should plan on Trevor not living more than two years of age. He, he even suggested that we contact hospice and for us to give serious condition, consideration to sedating our son. As a parent, I'm sure you can imagine a pretty hopeless uh, situation to be faced with. So how is it today that Trevor's sitting here at my side, helping me with this presentation, about to turn seven years of age, and assisting in this presentation? Well, there's one reason. A very special doctor with a huge heart, who's tonight's honoree. In our desperation to help our son, my wife and I found out about Dr. Maria Escalar on a Crabbe family web board Parent after parent had recommended for us to uh, contact her. So I did in mid-July of 2009, uh, about three weeks after Trevor was diagnosed. It turns out it'd be the best phone call that I ever made. I remember it was a Saturday. I called her on her cell phone. I'm not sure how I got the number, and I, I remember being amazed that she answered her phone at home on a weekend. After she was done, yelling at the dogs to get off the bed. <laughs> we had a conversation about what we could do for Trevor. Sadly, this was not the first time she'd taken a call like this. Uh, we talked for about an hour that day, and it was obvious to me that she was indeed an expert on Crab A disease. I knew in my heart that we had to take Trevor my wife and I had to take Trevor to North Carolina, where she was practicing at the time, to meet her. In August of 2009, we did just that. We flew from our home here in California. We live in Marietta, about an hour and 20 minutes east of here, with Trevor to see Dr. Escalar in North Carolina, where she was the director of the Study of Neurodevelopment and Rare Disorders Program. In our first meeting, we were blessed with over four hours of Dr. Escalar's personal attention with me, my wife, and Trevor present. During this time, she confidently stated that she would get Trevor comfortable, that he did not need to be sedated, and that he could indeed have a fulfilling life. She explained that she had done this before for many families, although she explained Trevor was too far progressed for the current transplant therapy she ensured us that she was willing to provide as much care for Trevor and our family as we required, and she could even do it remotely. She could not have been more committed to wanting to care for our precious son. At the end of the meeting, I couldn't help but notice in her office a teddy bear on a shelf on the wall with an inscription stating, on the eighth day, God created Dr. Escalar. This, this was a simple gift from another family who had benefited from her care. At this point, we began to see the first glimmer of hope with Trevor's situation. Here was a doctor that was not discounting our son with a terminal disease, but was telling us that he could have a life. During the meeting, she patiently and intelligently went over the entire progression of the disease. I remember being in awe of the way she carried herself, confident yet humble answering each one of our questions with such compassion. I knew right away we had found the right doctor for us and we immediately decided to turn over 100% of Trevor's care decisions to her, despite the fact that we'd be living on opposite sides of the country. I'm proud to say that due to her unmatched knowledge, understanding, compassion, and guidance over the past six plus years, Trevor is comfortable, he's aware, 
He woke up just for this. He's been sleeping all day. <laughs> He's comfortable and aware and, and doing amazing. And nearly seven years old, far exceeding everybody's expectations. He'll be seven in November. My boys are twins and looking forward to their birthday. But to Dr. Escalar's credit, he has not been in a hospital for over five years. Not only was the course of Trevor's life changed by this true champion of hope, but so have countless other children's and their families as well. I don't know how we could have survived without her. In my six years of working with Dr. Escalar, I'm continually amazed at her dedication, compassion, tireless effort, and determination to help families whose children have been diagnosed with devastating terminal diseases. She's the leading expert in caring for all kinds of leukodystrophies and is the most experienced clinician in the world for Crab A disease. Family after family will tell you how amazing this woman is. And they would express the same level of love and admiration for her as I do. Another Crab A mom recently said, quite simply, Dr. Escalar provides hope to families and patients where there is none. Currently practicing at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh, she continues to provide hope to patients and families on a daily basis. She is also dedicated to improving methods of early diagnosis and detection so that more children can benefit from the current available life-saving cord blood transplantation treatments. She's an expert in determining if newly diagnosed patients are candidates for such therapy. Furthermore, she's deeply involved with research for the next generation of therapies for Crab A disease and other leukodystrophies. When I first learned of the Champion of Hope Awards presented by Global Genes a few years ago, I immediately thought of Dr. Escalar. In fact, I told my wife, and I think I might have even told Nicole Boyce that I was going to nominate her. It seemed to me that this award was written specifically for her, for me and Trevor to be here tonight presenting this award to our hero, and Trevor's grandma too, is <laughs> right here. That means the world to us. On behalf of myself, my late wife, Nicole, my son, Trevor, and all of the families and their angels, many of which are up in heaven, that have come to know and love Dr. Maria Escalar, I simply would like to be the first to thank her and congratulate her on receiving this very prestigious award. Ladies and gentlemen, she's already up here on stage. <laughs> it's my great honor to welcome to the stage the 2015 Champion of Hope for Medical Care and Treatment, Dr. Maria Escalar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve, for that wonderful speech. Um, thank you, Global Genes, for recognizing me. <laughs> I'm very touched um, by this award. My journey started back in 1999 when I was at Duke University. And um, I'm trained as a pediatrician in neurodevelopmental disabilities. My plans were to treat uh, children with, who were premature, who had learning disabilities and attention deficit disorder. And in one of my clinic days, I met uh, a mom with a baby with Crabbe disease. And I really had not much to tell her because I've never seen a child with Crabbe disease. And I went and looked at the literature and I couldn't find much about it. So when she came in, I just told her, I've never seen this. I, I'm not sure how I can help you. She had come my way because she, they, she was considering, at that time, the new treatment, which was these core blood transplants. Um, and I was just very honest with her and told her, I, I don't think I can help you. And she started crying. She said, everybody tells me the same thing. How can I go home and take care of my child, who's now looking still very well, but is going to die very quickly? This is very scary for me to just take my child home. Uh, I think with the knowledge you have, you would do a better job than me on my own. And so <laughs> she challenged me and said, would you do this, this for me? And I thought about 
did what she was just saying, and I said, well, that makes sense. I should know more than she does about this. <laughs> so I said, well, I'm going to try, but I don't promise anything. I, I will try. And from that day on, I started learning about this family, and truly, I, she was helping me. I wasn't helping her. She was helping me understand what the life of a child with a neurodegenerative disease is like. Pediatricians are not trained to do anything like this. They're trained to treat children so they grow up and you see them grow up. And, and that's kind of why you go into pediatrics. You don't get trained to take um, care of children that will have neurodegenerative diseases. So to me, that, this was a whole kind of new experience. And I realized how challenging this was for this family. So I try really hard to use my knowledge to help with the symptoms and really look at it from her perspective and what, what, how can we make this a very meaningful life? That life is as precious as every, every other life. It's just different. So we, I worked with her um, for many years uh, until her child passed. And I guess because of the internet, before I knew it, I was getting a lot of crabby patients to my practice, and very quickly I became an expert in crabby disease. <laughs> the next part of the story was a huge challenge because I realized that these patients needed a lot of time and a lot of care, and there was no way we could really recover any funds to do this, not through insurance, not anywhere else. So the next challenge for me was really to convinced the places that I was working in that this was worthwhile doing. And that was probably the hardest thing that I've had to do. But fortunately, I met um, one physician who had the right infrastructure, Dr. Mel Levine, in, at the University of North Carolina. And I, I went to him and I said, I have an idea. Would you hire me? And he said, I don't have a job opening, but I think your idea sounds interesting. Why don't you come and work, help me, two days a week, and if you can bring your salary within a year, I will let you continue here. And it was kind of an, a big challenge, but I, I decided to do it. Why was I doing it? Because of the families that I was meeting. They were just encouraging, encouraging me to continue. And so I did, and very quickly I was able to fund what I was doing. I have to say, I could have not done this without the families. The families was, are, are what make me continue to fight <laughs> to be able to provide care for, for the rest of the families with who I spend, as Steve said, several hours. Um, I have to thank all the team that works with, with me. I was very fortunate to um, meet amazing people. One of them is with me, uh, Dr. Michelle Poe, who's sitting at the table and has accompanied me on this <laughs> journey since 2003 and um, who moved with me to Pittsburgh. And I was very fortunate to have a hospital, a children's hospital of Pittsburgh who believes in my work and is supporting it to the point that they have decided um, to make one of their main strategies for pro programmatic strategies, uh, rare diseases, and they have established a center for rare disease therapy. So I want to take advantage to thank um, Dr. Uh, Pellmutter, who hired me at Children's, and um, Chris Gessner, who's the president of the hospital, for believing in this work and providing more support so that we can see more and more families. I want to also give a special thanks to our nurse practitioner who has worked with me now for seven years, um, Tara West, that has allowed me to extend my services to hundreds of families within the country and actually many places of the world. And obviously to all the families that believe in us, that teach us every day about your, their struggles and make us realize that we actually can help. Um, I want to thank everybody for that, for letting me be part of this journey. Thank you.